Okay, let's start with the basics. Um, when you when you buy the Aquatronica Touch, uh, one of the things you definitely want to go out and buy is one at least one SD card. I got an eight gigabyte one; those are cheap. Uh, USB key. You probably have a half a dozen of these lying around the house. I just had this one. And if you're interested in connecting it by Wi-Fi, you need to get a Wi-Fi dongle. Now, I went out and bought this next brand version, and it doesn't work with the Aquatronica Touch. If you go on their website, they will list the, the models that work. I didn't uh, pay much attention. My system is currently connected with the Ethernet cable, which I prefer. I only got this because I wanted to use it on a demo um, with this unit. But uh, if you're seriously going to connect via Wi-Fi, which I know a lot of people will want to do, uh, I prefer Ethernet um, just from a reliability standpoint. But um, you can certainly just look on their website and you will see it. Or in the manual, they tell you which ones will work. So getting into it now, um, first to hook it up, you have your two access points. Um, one is here, which you can use your finger push down open and inside here as you can see you have uh, two optional one port one and two ports here this is the bus line the USB bus line that connects to the power bar the 12 volt and the Ethernet cable and there's a battery under here uh, which I don't know if you can see but there's a battery right there and that battery is basically the backup battery, which you can change at any point if uh, you need to. The other compartment is over here, and you have to push this clip over all the way with your, th your finger, and then use your thumb and push up. This is a USB port here for the USB key that you may want to use. And underneath, you have the SD card slot uh, here. I hope you can see that. And another USB port. And this USB port, I think, is for a... Ver basically, uh, you have to look at this controller differently from most of the others. Uh, this is running um, Linux OS, basically. And it's almost like an Android-type platform. Um, so you have the programming itself and then you have the operating system. I think uh, this allows you to get even lower down into like the kernel level where you can uh, upgrade, um, upgrade the system in case there is any kind of fault or they come out with a newer version uh, that changes some of the programming inside the chipsets itself. Okay, so that's basically it now. Um, for connection to the unit you first need to get a power bar for the first basic connection we're going to start off with by needing a power bar and one USB cable and plug one of these plug adapters or the one that comes with it so let me get those and we and hook that up Okay, so here are all the parts. So let's get going here. And the first thing you need to do is go into the back of the controller here, hook up your 12 volt. By the way, this is not plugged in yet, the adapter. Hook up your 12 volt cable. I find it works better routing it to this side. Next, hook up one of your, US your USB cable. All right, and that goes to that side. And for right now, we're not gonna hook up an ethernet cable. We're just starting off with the very basics here. And you can put the cover back on. Over here, if you were gonna use a Wi-Fi dongle, uh, even though this one doesn't work, I'm gonna plug it in just to show you that, you know, that's how it would plug in and your Wi-Fi is now set and you just slide back on this connector 
clicks into place and you're good to go there. Now on the power bar, I would pick uh, probably one of the positions that you want to, but uh, I always prefer going in the end corner there. And you would plug in your USB cable. So now that's connected. So that's connected there and everything is right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in is the adapter that goes to the controller. And right away you see the little Lennox symbol come up there and it's gonna go through a boot process. And um, it's basically loading up the, um, the OS and then loading on the, the Aquatronica program onto it. And this does take about um, oh, 15, I mean 30 seconds or so. And now we're up. Okay, and you get last blackout duration, zero, zero, blah, 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 it's blank. And this is fresh out of the box, right? So just touch, everything touch screen. Now, let me start off by going through the uh, basic layout of the screen and some of the buttons because if you are using an older Aquatronica system, this is very different. And it could be very frustrating for you. Um, if you are new, going into it brand new, um, it's going to just be like learning anything else. Uh, you have no pre preconceived notions of how it operates, so you will just uh, learn as you go along. If you're an older Aquatronica user, you're going to start trying to do things the way uh, the older controller did it which is kind of like a, a, a kind of tree formation where you go to one setting and that setting leads you into another setting and everything is nested going branch by branch. This is a little different in the way it operates in that um, you, don't, you, you, you can basically go from one area to another area uh, without having to, to, to be necessarily caught in going through stage by stage. So that's a little bit of the differences in how they, they program. Um, up, let me, um, first let me get the camera adjusted in closer to this screen so that uh, you can see this better. Okay, also in case I'd forgotten, uh, you also have this stand which comes with it uh, for mounting it. And basically it has a latch under here and it clips up here, the clip goes in here, the latch goes on the bottom here. Uh, you line up the hole at the bottom, once that's in, you press down and it's latched in. And this can pull out and you have a screw hole here section, which I highly recommend that you screw it down. If not, the thing is going to be kind of tapping around, which you, I'm probably going to have issues with as I go along here but uh, it also has a screw at the front edge here so you can mount this to uh, wherever, you, where is, wherever is convenient for you and uh, certainly will make life a lot easier than uh, having it being able to slide around like this okay so I've got it set up here and first let me apologize for that kind of strobing effect you're seeing I can't see that with my eyes, but I can tell that the camera is picking it up. And you know that happens when you try to film a picture of a, a LCD or a screen that's refreshing. Um, you get this, strobe, this strobing line effect, but that's not in the actual screen when you look at it with your own eyes. So let's start off with, every, with, with where we are in this controller. First of all, down here you have your pages. And uh, you different pages one two three and that basically is scrolling you across over here you have your menu that's self-explanatory up here where it says aquatronica is actually the home button so first off let's just go into menu and let's we need to start by first setting our time and stuff tap it and as you can see it says the system name you can change it to act from aquatronica controller to whatever name you want to put in for it dave's controller dave's fish tank uh you go to the date and you want to set the date here 
Okay, so let's type in a date. Now, when something is highlighted, uh, it's actually in black. So the one you're operating on is in black. So it says 010100, day, day, month, month, year, year. So let's put in 070615, and that's the date. And then we'll go over here to the time, and the time is... 05, which I think is going to be in military time, so uh, it would be 17, uh, 16, and press OK. So that's the time and the date up here are set, 1716. Okay, and the language is in English, obviously, uh, unless whatever country you're in. It has a, a load of electro um, language packs that you can get electronically uh, in the updates, typically. And under display, you can adjust the brightness. And you can change the background um, to gray or aqua. I'm sure they're going to come out with more. Uh, power savings and scroll time. Now these are important. Uh, scroll time, as you, as you put more and more, well, what they do now is they call them widgets. As you put more widgets, uh, which show the status of each, de each device, each probe, each power unit, as you put more of them on the screen, it obviously takes up more than one screen so in order to to do that they have to scroll one screen to the next to the next so that if you're just looking at it casually um, you can just see each one as it passes by you can also manually just tap down here and change to the next screen to the next screen so if you set this to zero seconds it's just manually it, it's it's no longer scrolling um, Power savings off, um, power savings on, I think that blanks out the display after a time period. If you touch it, it comes back on. If you don't, it's off. I have to look that up further, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, I'm not going to touch into the password or the SMS or the, gen or, or the rest of the settings. I've been in the general already. But I will say under the password... Um, if you have young kids at home, you definitely want to enable the password. Um, my son almost wrecked my tank by going in and trying to change things, or he was just playing with it. And uh, if you turn on the password, you can't change any of the settings without uh, first putting in the password. So that's just something to think about. But that's just generally now we've done the first thing, and let's press Menu and we come to the widgets here on the screen and as you can see down here it says one which uh, is the first page and if I press this I go to the second page and if I press this I go to the third page and going back as you can see on page um, one you have your home overview settings home setup Agenda, sequence, programs, power units. Now, key thing here is programs, which is where you're going to set up all your programs. Um, your home setup will allow you to set up how the screen looks. And uh, your power units allow you to um, name the power units and decide what they're going to do. Um, these are for all different probes that you may have connected. Um, so if you don't have a probe connected, it'll probably be light grayed out. It'll be dark if, if, if a probe is connected of the right kind. Uh, next, you have the dosing pump, uh, your light, uh, LED lights. I, I'm pretty sure this is for LED lights or possibly um, T5 lights, lighting systems that uh, are variable. Um, and the Ethernet setup over here, which people are going to want to know how they connect to the Internet and so forth. So that basically covers the, the uh, basic menus that are in here. 
And once you go back and you press Aquatronic and you're back to the home, you see nothing here because I haven't set any widgets yet. So let's start off by setting up our first um, device, which would be the power bar. So let's start with that. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in the power bar now. And here to click and it detects the new device and there are the eight plugs and the PU is power unit and it basically is showing you um, the status of each plug that they're off they're off and uh, if you can I don't know if you can see that clearly but like the the one there has an A next one B C D E F giving you all the plugs which correspond if you look on the power bar each one is labeled A through H so we press OK and on our home screen now we have all eight of our power bar plugs and next thing we need to do is plug something into one of them and just make a quick check on and off see if it works okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take a simple desk lamp uh, like this one and I'm just going to plug it in to power bar, the power bar plug A and it's in. And by the way, I got that bit mixed up. Uh, the manual, auto manual, the manual turns everything on. So all lights are on. And if you look on the screen for the Aquatronica, if I turn on or go to manual all plugs are on so it's just a bypass uh, if you want to get all the plugs on not something I've ever had to use in the past but that's just to let you know so I'm gonna position this lamp um, right behind the controller so you can kinda of see when the light comes on and off and now I'm going to go in and just show you uh, how to how to program a power bar, how to put, program the power bar um, for any kind of function you might okay, do. So let's start. Now this is now in the home screen, and as you can see, it's been populated with these widgets. And if I scroll over one, there's nothing because these are all I have: eight power bars, eight plugs. Sorry, and so the next thing I need to do is start to define it and you want to be very careful when you do this at the start of laying out what you want to plug into which of the of the plugs uh, you want to write that down that you know your uh, T5 light number one is plugged into plug A uh, your T5 light um, system number two or your halide system or LEDs or whatever is plugged into B uh, C is your pump, D, you want to have that all noted down on paper um, because it will be a lot easier when you when you start programming. So first thing I'm going to do is tap menu and I'm going to go to power units over here and this is where the touch is a little different from the old Aquatronica in that uh, you first have to select what you want to do and then the device you want to do it with so right now um, it's highlighted here in manual command and if I pick power unit A up here I can just tell it on and if I hit OK that unit is on and you can see the light over here is on if if I go in tap it again tell it off press OK it's off and there are priorities in the Aquatronica programming as to what has the greater priority over whatever else. Um, I will give you a list of that uh, later down in the video of the priorities. But manual commands are pretty high up there. Um, I think the only thing that can override a manual command of on or off is a leak sensor which can then turn something that may be on off 
uh, but each thing does have a priority, which is great because you need to have that structure so that when you make programs, certain things can override if something goes wrong. Uh, if water starts spilling, you want your leak detector to be able to turn off your pump, okay? And that's, uh, that, that's definitely something you need to do. So let's start off with, we'll go, into the pro, we'll go back in this manual command power bar one and we'll make sure it's turned to auto and auto just simply means that and I'm gonna press OK auto means that it can be controlled by anything uh, it can be controlled by a temperature it can be controlled by a level sensor anything can turn it on or turn it off and that's the normal state that most plugs are left in it, um, except in the rare instance where I don't know you might want to have something just left on all the time or when you want to use manual command often is to kill something uh, if you come home and you see something and you want to turn it off you just quickly tap off okay and that pump or something might go off while you clean uh, your skimmer so that's basically the, the commands there. So we're going to go back in the manual. Sorry. Pick auto. OK. And we're there. Now let's do a program timer. Um, pick program timer. And here it's a little different once again. I'm going to select. It's on uh, A, as you can see. And I'm going to pick top row here and I'm gonna say plus to add something now I'm gonna give it a time from so I hit this from here and I got into this new menu it's now 1736 so let's say from 1738 to uh, 17, um, uh, 40, oops, sorry, if you make a mistake like that, uh, you have back arrow, 40, and we want this thing to come on for 0, 0, 1 minute, and we want it to go off for one minute and we press OK and here are the dates that it'll do it on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday if you don't want it to do it on certain dates days of the week then you can just black them out and it'll only do it on those particular days since today's uh, Sunday uh, we're fine here I press OK and that program is up and I'm gonna come out, go here because it's 1370. Its time is now 5:38, um, so I expect this is going to start operating. And there we go. Pump on or light on, and it should stay on for one minute. And I'm going to probably splice cut out some of this time when I edit it out of uh, this video. Um, I don't want to bore you to death here for a minute watching a light, but uh, it's got about 30 seconds left to go. And you can see, by the way, uh, on the widget here is a clock showing you that this plug is on a timer. So depending on how you program it you might get different little icons on each widget to tell you what kind of programming that particular plug is set to and this should soon switch off and there we go turned off and in another minutes time it'll come back on again so that's just showing you a timer now a more practical application of that would be to turn on the lights for your tank you would set it to turn on at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning um, 
turn off at 8 o'clock at night. Um, and the difference in the programming there would be that, um, sorry, in the wrong thing here, go to power unit. The difference in the program timer for here, and now to edit it, this, as you notice, it says, it tells you the different times, the time on for one minute, off for one minute. This is going to come back on shortly. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to go to this pencil down here for edit. And if you change the zero, the one minute here to zero zero and you change the off to zero 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 and you save it okay and I press okay the light will probably come on once I get back out well actually I passed 1740 hours so the light is not gonna come back on but if I went back in and I changed it again edit it and I change this to 1743 pressed OK and then OK and I turned on for all days all right you see the light came on and that light will stay on until we hit 5 43 in the afternoon and then it'll turn off and um, that that will be basically uh, basically how you would normally set a light so the other functions when you're in here um, of having this on and off is just to set a, a, a wavering period that if you want and I use this a lot also um, when I when I have my tank set up that the lights um, will stay on one set of T5 lights will stay on for X amount of, of hours and then uh, it'll go off off for like two hours and then it'll come back on and then another bank will come on when those come off and so forth uh, wave effects tide effects and so forth I'm not going to get into that for this video um, the only other thing I would get into next is probably going here and I'm going to show you that you can just press this here sorry and delete it and that program is gone right it is deleted out um, blackout now if I pick power button A for blackout this is this is one of the great features that Aquatronica came up with very uh, early on. Um, you want you want to know you want to know in your aquarium what you want to do if the power should go out, because you you might not want your skimmer to start um, powering up before your pump has had time to um, take to to start circulating the water, or you might want to have some other action. Um, happen first um, before some other action happens. It, it, there's so many variables uh, depending on how your aquarium is, is configured and uh, basically uh, what you want what you want what this allows you to do is to set up what plug one or any particular plug in this case plug one will do in case there's a power outage. So to start off with, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to make uh, back a program to turn on that light. Okay, so I've set back a new timer and you can see the light is on over here and it's set uh, to go off at um, 6 p.m. And um, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go in, the timer is here. And you can see that program there or the timer setting for that plug and I'm gonna go into blackout and by the way these are not really program they're programs but they're they're not programs dependent on any sensor or anything like this this is more how you would deal um, with with just 
the daily routine of how a pump or a light or something functions, uh, not how it's going to react to something going wrong or whatever. This is setting up your daily routine and your fallbacks in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to go into blackout, which is our major fallback here, and I'm going to tell it, okay, I'm going to pick pump A, and I'm going to say, you have up here action duration. I hope you can see that clearly. Blackout duration, plug status, enabled, right? Okay, action duration basically says that if there's a blackout or a power outage, that for X amount of time, I, do, I want this plug to do this. And what you want it to do is whatever you tell the plug status to be. The blackout duration is to say that, well, if the blackout lasted one minute, then do this. If the blackout lasted uh, less than a minute, then don't bother doing it. All right? Um, typically, or if the blackout lasted 30 minutes, then I want... Uh, something else to totally different ha happen. So just for a simple test here, I'm going to put in blackout duration can be um, the action, sorry, I want to have happen will last for one minute. And the blackout duration is as quick as possible. In other words, if it blacks out at all, I want this plug to go off. I don't want it to come on. And then I'm going to enable this program and I'm going to press OK and so now that's set right now if I unplug this unit plug the controller out and this would simulate a blackout plug it back in and we're gonna have boot up here Okay, it's still booting up and you notice the light is still on as I said independent of the controller itself um, the power bar do whatever it's programmed to do um, okay now you saw that the light went out that's because basically the Aquatronica OS has now taken over and what's happened is that blackout that I just set for one minute has now taken effect of course, when you have a normal power outage, the power bar would also lose power, so the light would have been off anyway. It's just the fact that I, I separately um, unplugged uh, the controller just alone in this case. So after one minute, what will happen here is you'll see the blackout duration, which was two minutes. Press OK. And you'll notice there's an X here. And X is telling you that this device is turned off by the blackout function. It's the icon to mean that uh, a blackout has occurred and it's forcefully turned off. And as soon as the one minute expires, um, so this could be your protein skimmer would be off when the power comes off, back on uh, for one minute to give your pump some time to remove water or whatever out of the sump and we should be approaching the point shortly where the one minute is up and the light should resume back its normal activity and there we go the light is back on and it's on timer so that basically demonstrates the blackout function um, there are a lot more things in here under the power units that you can fool around with. As I said, some are functions, whatever, um, tidal effects, wave effects. But the last one I'm going to touch on is changing the name. Because right now we have it set up as power unit one. So I select change name, I press, oops, and I'm going to just delete what was there to put PU, and I'm going to call this. Um, light. And I'm going to change the alphabet to numbers light one. Or 
you know, you could just make it a little more fancy. You have so much space here, light, T5. Um, and you could go in here and um, you, you, oops, sorry, space. One. Okay. So that's your, your T5 light number one. And you can see that right here, the name shows up. So that's just putting in the name of, of each plug. And you really want to set each plug's name um, up first. So the next one over, I could change name here, pick second plug, and I could call this um, pump. lowercase pump or delete main And that's now my main pump and so forth and so forth you can you, it, as a matter of fact one of the first things you want to do is just go through and name each one so that there's never a confusion so stage one after you get your power bar up is probably cha uh, change all the names to whatever makes sense for what you're going to use them for and uh, write down each one what it is on a piece of paper and you're good to go there um, your lights are typically going to be controlled by timers. Um, other things uh, will be cha will be controlled. Your pump will be. If you're going to use a main pump, by the way, you don't want to use it by a manual command and just say on or off because then the only way it'll it'll it'll, it'll go off is if there's a leak. Uh, your main pump typically you would go in and you'd want to put a timer oops all right the light went off because the time has expired okay now um what i was saying is with the main pump for your unit um you do not want to turn it on manually um that's just a bad idea you don't want to just tell it to t stay on all the time because most almost nothing else can turn it off uh, on and off as a manual command has one of the top priorities. Only a leak, as I said earlier, will will a uh, water sensor going off will be able to shut off that pump. Uh, you you would definitely want your pump to shut off if the level in your tank gets too high or something like that. So one of the ways you want to do this is to make sure that the pump is set with a timer. So I've selected timer over here, and I'm gonna to go to the main pump, which I set as my second plug, and I'm gonna add a program here, and I'm just gonna leave it from zero, zero to zero, zero, and the on, off, zero, zero, all the days, Monday to then. And you'll see here, it says 24 hour, which is just telling you that it's always on, basically, via the timer, and just press okay. And now if I come back out, you'll see that the main pump is listed as on. And if I plug the light into that, I'm plugging it into the second plug here, you'll see that it's on. So your pump is now running all the time, uh, 24 hours a day, but it's still able to be overridden by a program uh, that you may want to have the ability to override it. As I said, for instance, your overflow could get blocked, your tank level is rising, uh, your level switch goes off, and you want it to shut down the pump instantly. Okay, well, that's because it's on a timer now, you can do that. So I just wanted to show you that. And uh, that now brings up another interesting aspect. I mean, we've gone through 
uh, just plugs here basically and there are so many other things and uh, most of them I can't test them uh, using regular methods so I thought about this uh, long and hard of how to um, run some tests for you and demonstrate some things without hooking it up to my tank because if I hook it up to my tank you're not going to be able to see 90% of the stuff that's happening and things happen so slowly that we we you know we get, die of old age waiting on um, you know the next time when the RO system is going to top up the tank that could be an hour from now you know um, I want a, I want a controlled environment and I remembered when I got my first controller that I had actually set up a mini uh, system whereby I could test it and see uh, how it operates um, in a in a controlled environment uh, basically just using uh, uh, some beaker flasks and uh, it's gonna look kind of odd it's gonna look strange but it'll allow you to see um, as you set up programs what they're doing and how they're working so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, set that up but first I'm gonna plug in some more probes and we're just gonna name them and I'm gonna show you a few more programming things and then we're gonna move on to uh, putting it in a small mini working environment uh, so you can see how everything interacts together